Hello? Hi. Hi, Denise. Good to hi, speak hi. to you. Sorry about all that confusion. Hi, Denise. Hi. I, don't, I hope it didn't take too much time out of your day. Oh, no problem. No problem. I was still awake. Oh, okay. So have you had like a, a media day for Bellator today or is it um just this, just this one interview to do? Yes, yes. Yes, I uh, had uh, some interviews and it's, uh, yes. Okay, well, hopefully I don't ask you, yes. ask you the same stuff you've heard already, but, um, so I'll go straight into it by asking you, obviously, the most important question is, how does it now feel to be Bellator's women's flyweight champion? Would you say it's up there with the best, one of the best achievements in your fighting career? Well, I have now, I think, uh, almost 55, and this this was my fifth world title and I think that this is the best and the title with the most in, yeah with the most everything um, um, the, the, the silence after the, the belt so um, yeah, if I talk about the, if that I'm the first the belt of the world champion uh, the first one to have the belt yeah that's really an honor for me and I think that this is the, the best prestation of my of my own uh, whole career so um yeah this is really something special that's good to hear um one thing i had to ask you about that was were you nervous at all when the decision was read because obviously it was a split decision and we all know you've been on the end of some of the controversial ones before such as the one against iona windman's that was overturned so was it quite a suspenseful situation when it's being read out uh, sorry, a question again? So, obviously, it was a split decision, but and, and I think one judge gave you every single round, whereas the other another judge gave her three rounds and only gave you two. When they were reading the scorecards, was it very nervous? Yes, it was, um, but it was nothing that I didn't know about. Um, it was nothing that I'm not used to it, because... I knew that I, f I fight in her hometown uh, with her with her audience, so I knew that I have to I have more pressure and more to prove myself that I have to win here because yeah it was her hometown. So when I heard judge scorecard that one judge give her three rounds, I was a little bit um, confused, but it was nothing special because I knew that. I have to work harder because it was her hometown. So, yeah, I think that I, I didn't know which round was for her because I think that all five rounds was for me. But, yeah, you you always know that. that with, if you fight in someone's hometown, you have more pressure. And you fight also not against your opponent, but also against the audience and against all the Italian audience. So... Yeah, I was a little bit confused, but it was nothing special. I, I, I won the fight, and that was the, the most important thing of the, of the night. Yeah, I understand what you mean about the hometown, because it's quite quite confusing to hear one judge give you five rounds, whereas one other judge gives you two, I mean. But um, anyway, when moving on to someone you actually was quite interested in, you said this is your 50th fight um, in pro kickboxing. A comparison that I was making when I was looking at your career was to um, Gegard Mousasi, well, particularly his MMA career. But what I didn't realise is you're both fighting your 50th fight on the same day, which is um, April 8th, which is quite weird. I was just wondering if you've ever crossed paths with Gegard before. Well, uh, my husband trained with him. Oh, okay. Uh, here, in, uh, here in Amsterdam, yeah, so I knew him. But I know I don't know him personal. But my husband, or sometimes he train with, he spar with him. So yeah. that's why I knew him, and also I knew him, of course, about uh, from MMA. But um, I didn't know that we have that similar uh, thing about our fighting uh, career. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he's a great fighter, and he's uh, one of the best here in Holland. And um, he also gives the the Dutch fighters in the whole world. Uh, a good name so uh yeah i have a lot of respect for him okay that's very good to hear sure. one thing while we're on the topic of uh your partner hesty gurges i'd like to ask what it's like being in a relationship with both of you fighting professionally i mean it must be stressful enough with only one of you fighting but two of you i mean how do you both work around this is it easy um well it's 
it's easy because we both have uh, we both know what what to do in fight camp and we both have the similar things uh, to do and uh, we think about things the same we train the same time so and he just uh, finished his fight uh, last Saturday but uh, unfortunately his opponent didn't uh, show up in the ring so the fight was cancelled but we're now both in fight camp and um, I think that that's uh, really a plus one because now he really knows what I'm feeling and he knows when he has to talk to me and sometimes he knows okay now I just have to leave her alone because she has her moment you know? uh, I see. and that's the same thing that I know with him yeah so it, it's really like yeah we have that special connection because we know how it, how it is to be a fighter and how to to, to live in a fighter's world. So, yeah, that's really a, a plus point of our, our relationship that we both are fighters. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. It probably helps more having a partner that is a fighter than isn't because I, I guess they understand you more, like you're saying. Yeah, that's for sure because now I'm, you know, I can do not nothing special. I can go out for dinner or I have to rest some time and I have to go training and I'm also on a diet and he knows everything, you know, and he understands everything and I think that the best people to understand that are fighters by themselves. So yeah, that's really that's really what, what connects us more more uh, stronger that makes the connection more strong because we both are fighters and we know the fighters world. So um, yeah, that's really special. Okay, that's good to hear. One thing which I had to ask you is both you and your partner obviously um, live and train in Amsterdam and I was just wondering loyalty is the word loyalty is always being used nowadays in the fight game and I was wondering have you or your partner ever contemplated making the move across to America to live or training or are you happy training in Amsterdam in your home country of Holland well we both have I think the best uh, kickbox trainer. He has Tom Haring, and uh, I train with Musi. And we have the same uh, strength and condition trainer, uh, Michel van Halde. And I think that 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 is my the best team that I can get to um, to to get me fit and to get me, make me strong there in the ring. So I don't think that that the US going to make me much better or much stronger because I think I have the best trainers here in Amsterdam and I think that he thinks the same but you know it, it, it's a sport and if he says that he has to go to the US to train or uh, he has to live there then we both have the same dream so I think that also if it's in Amsterdam or in the US on both places we can be happy and live our dreams together but I think that Amsterdam is really our city and uh, there's no place like Amsterdam and um, now we're all also opening here in Amsterdam uh, a lunch room so yeah our heart is here in Amsterdam so I think that we are the happiest people here in our own town and that's Amsterdam for sure <laughs> okay that's good to hear um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on your opponent Martine Micheletto. Obviously, she's 18 and 10 in her kickboxing career, but do you think it's important not to pay attention to her record to avoid overlooking her? Yeah, I think that um, I never look at the record, you know, because um, a fight is a fight, and a fight is on that day, and it has nothing to do with the past. And I think I respect her to be my opponent and uh, every opponent is different and she has also the, the strong, strongest point but she has also weakness so and that's uh, with every opponent and it's, it's the most important thing that I live to myself and where, where my uh, straightness is and where I am the best in. So, yeah, some some people, some fighters, they look at their opponents and I think, oh, they have did or they have that. No, it's my day and it's my fight. And that's the most important thing to do, that you look at yourself. And I don't overlook or underestimate my, my opponent because she can, she can be very strong on that day 
um, but she can also be very weak on that day and she has everything to win because that kind of opponents have nothing to lose against me. I have everything to lose and that I, and that I have more pressure. And that's what I realized that I don't underestimate any opponent, even if she has five fights and four losses, I don't care. She's my opponent and she's going to be the best. She has everything to win for me. So uh, that's, that's her, um, that's her motivation and I know that. So yeah, it's, it's that I don't, I don't look at the past or her record or something. She's a good girl and we're going to see who's the best on the age of girl. See, that's interesting because you say that because it actually brings me on what to, I was going to ask you next is a fight that recently happened recently with Jermaine Durand and me. Obviously, she was being quite overlooked because she doesn't have many fights in MMA, but now she's, I mean, she's Dutch's, she's the Dutch UFC featherweight champion. I mean, is she someone that you look up to and did you watch her fight at UFC 208? Well, she, um, she's definitely some fighter that, uh, I, that I have a lot of respect for because also in kickboxing she was uh, one of the greatest female fighters and she uh, makes, a, makes a, uh, a step that also kickboxers can be an MMA uh, champion because uh, before people, kickboxers have no chance in the MMA game because if a kickboxer goes to the ground then it's done. But now you see Jermaine Durandamy, you see Johanna Jacek, they all both are stand-up fighters, and now they are champion in in, the, in MMA and in the biggest division of the world. So they they are they are proof that also we as kickboxers can be good in the MMA game, and uh, that that is something that I really respect, that I have really a lot of respect for, and um, also for Jermaine, also for Johanna. They are really a, a big example for all women fighters that um, want to go to MMA. So, uh, yeah, that's for sure. Okay, alright, I see. Um, like we were speaking about earlier, this is your 50th fight. One thing I did want to ask you is, you have so many fights on your record, but, but, I mean, I would say it's still early days in your career as a fighter. I mean, you're only 27, but what I was going to ask you is, do you think the speed and power is still there compared to your younger days? And if so, do you think these tools are just continuing to improve as you grow older and more experienced? Well, uh, talk about going or getting older. Tomorrow I'm going to be 28. Oh, that's so, good. Happy uh, birthday for tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think that if I compare from uh, from the beginning when I started kickboxing, I think that um, there's there's so much movement in the women divisions of fighting and the fighting game, and now you have so many bigger platforms than kickboxers have nowadays than than when ten years ago, and. I think that that that's really what what motivates me now that Bellator also opened this division, and I think that Bellator has the, the biggest platform for kickboxers for uh, the women division in the whole world, and now they open this division, and I'm champion in it. So that may, that motivates me even more. And if I think about ten years ago, I I was dreaming about that I want to be a world champion and then I was a world champion the first time and I think okay this is it but then you dream more and more and more and I think that two years ago I was not motivated anymore to to train because I had the highest platform and then that time was infusion was the biggest platform for women mm -hmm. fighters uh, for the kickbox division and I was a world champion in it, and I defend my my belt three times. And then after that, I think, okay, now and what now? But then my motivation gets when Bellator started this division and opened this platform. Then I thought, okay, now there's more, more. So I think that yeah, now. This, that the sellers will come with this decision 
step, the step that motivates me and keep me going. So, um, yeah, I'm really thankful for that. I completely understand what you say about Be- Bellator being one of the biggest platforms today, like you were saying. Um, I mean, they, they, their success this year has been great. I mean, they've just put together that pay-per-view card in New York City. They're bringing in loads of big names. Do you think that all these big names they're attracting will mean the rise of more women making the move across to Bellator? And is this someone you'd like to see? Well, I think that we have a lot of uh, good names in Bellator and a lot of big also women fighters because the flyweight division in MMA in the Bellator division is also really awesome. I think that they have a lot of big names and good fighters in it. So I think that Bellator, yeah, shows the world that also in this division because I think the flyweight division for women is the biggest division in all over the world because a lot of girls like Johanna, they were also in the beginning flyweight, but now they have to drop down to 150. And I think, I really think that the best weight flat category in, in the woman division is the flyweight division because we have so much girls but sometimes the girls they want to go to 115 because it's UC but now Bellator has this division the flyweight division I think that this this is the queen of all divisions for, for women fighters so yeah I I'm, I think that, uh, that Bellator has really a good platform and uh also for the for women fighters in the flyweight division that uh, that they have a lot of talent so um yeah that really was also was interesting me the mma the mma fighters yeah i understand what you mean about the women's flyweight division because that's something which isn't in the ufc yet but it's what a lot of people have wanted but it's not there yet so i understand what you mean about how bellator yeah. provides that but the ufc doesn't yes um, that's really because you see also fighters as Johanna they have to drop down to 115 so yeah fighters like Cyborg they, yeah they, exactly they test the weight with, with dropping down weight so yeah I think that uh, this division is the best as we were mentioning um this division and the, the, li- the likes of Cyborg, it brings me on to ask you about a very popular topic today, which is weight cutting. I'd like to get your opinion on this. Do you think it, it's safe if you're smart about it, or do you think there should be no weight cutting at all in MMA? Well, I think that there's always be has to be a weight cut, because I walk around like 50, 60 kilograms, but I fight at 50. Mm. But I think that if I'm 57, then I'm more stronger and fitter than if I walk around on 60. So I think that a weight cut is good, but a healthy weight cut could be is important because sometimes you see people that dropping down weight and they pass, they go out or they get knocked out before they get weighed in, and that's not healthy. I think that that after a few years, if you if you you do that that is so uh, damaging for your body you know I think that um, a healthy weight cut is is possible that that's that's our sport you know but the weight cut that people knock out and drop away that that could be stopped but yeah that's not that's not the sport our fault that most of the time the trainers are the fighters themselves fault because they have the choice fighting it or not fighting it so yeah yeah really, uh, something that you can discuss or you can you cannot blame it on on the organization or everything it's just the blame on the fighter yeah i understand what you say because like you were saying you walk around about 60 kilos and you fight at 57 that we're talking that's less than 10 pounds so it's like you said if you're smart about it yeah. you can be safe with it um, yes, yes, you have to be safe in it. Yeah, one thing I would also like to hear, it's quite funny actually, I'd like to hear how and who your nickname of Miss Dynamite originated from. Well, when I fought my first uh, professional fight, it was uh, somebody in the audience giving me that name, because um, he said that yeah, 
you you fight like dynamite. You just explode somewhere, and then you you're just like dynamite. You know, like an explosion. Yeah. And the miss dynamite because most of the time people don't see me as a fighter next to besides the ring. And yeah, they call me because I'm always just a girl that fights. You know, so. Mm-hmm. They call me just dynamite because, yeah, you're just a girly fighter that explodes in the ring. And, yeah, that name is just, well, just, just my nickname for, I think, now almost seven years, I think. Yeah, that's calm outside the ring and explosive inside the ring. That's, that's good to hear. Um, obviously, I'm yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> I'll move on to my last and final question now, which is, Obviously, you always look to finish your opponent, but as you know, you haven't had a finish in quite a while now. But with the big gloves and the smaller weight class, it's obvious that less knock there's knockouts are less common, if you know what I mean. And I was just wondering, is there any increased motivation on your behalf to finish Micheletto, or is it exactly the same preparation as usual? Well, I have now a different because um, um, also my training see that. And I think that I know what what it is that um, I still don't give my hundred percent in all five rounds, and I think that that's the problem because um, and I know by myself that I don't give hundred percent. I can give a lot of more, and I think that if I give my hundred percent, that any girl could stand five rounds against me. So. It's just in my head, you know, it's a mental situation. And uh, now I, I discuss that with my trainers and my trainers also see that. And we train we train to, to give every five rounds 100% uh, explosion. And uh, I hope that this fight, um, that, uh, that I'm going to show that, that also I'm going to give in the five rounds everything 100%. And... Uh, that's what I have to do and sometimes I forget that and I think okay for 70% it's okay but now I just want to go for the 100% and uh, I hope that uh, yeah my training say that if I give my 100% like that that no no one can stand uh, no one can stand in front of me for a long time so um, I hope that uh, the age I can show that Denise, I can't thank you enough for this. I wish you and your partner Hesdi all the best. I hope he gets this fight rebic soon. And thank I'll, you. I wish you all the best on thank April eighth, and I'll definitely be tuning in. Okay, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Oh, thank you. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye. Thank you, Nick. Cheers. Bye.